Hello, Scorpio. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. If Scorpio is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. And if there is anything you need me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Okay. Now this is going to be a general reading. So try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Scorpio, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And there's a Ten of Swords. Interesting. Things, things are definitely changing. Let's find out exactly what is going on. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, going from a Ten of Swords to an Ace of Swords. That is, that is pretty perfect. And we're ten. Oh, an Empress and the Sun and the Hanged Man. And some really great Earth energy. Okay, I, I'm kind of in disbelief here. Um, I think that this Ten of Swords is saying, look, uh, you're not going to believe it, but this is absolutely perfect, right? You may, your mind may be rebelling against all of these cards and all of this energy, but it really is true. This really did happen. Um, this is, uh, this is the perfect set of cards. But first, before I forget, I don't want to get carried away. We're going to do our mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. We're going to select just one card from the Smith Waite Tarot. We're going to set it aside. We'll put the frog right on top. We're not going to look at it until the very end. And hopefully um, that card will tie everything together and give us the confirmation that we need. So uh, let's look at this again. We've got major, 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 major. We've got air, we've got water, and we've got earth. Um, wow. Wow. We don't have any specifically uh, fire energy. We don't have any kind of wands cards. Uh, but I think the sun up here really is, is doing the duty of all of the fire energy, right? That The sun, that's pretty much all the power and energy and creativity and light that we need, right? Um, we can hold a little match up to the sun, but it's it's not going to matter, right? We've got the sunshine. That's all we need. That That is all of the fire that we really need. Now, um, the first thing that we should talk about is this... Ten of Swords. Uh, this this is huge. Um, I, I think that your your belief system is changing. I think that you maybe never really like, for instance, you never believed in miracles, right? You never believed that something could be this good. You never thought that um, maybe you never thought God, Goddess, Deity was was real, was a real force, was a real power. You know. I feel that there was some disbelief some skepticism, and it's good. Hey, I'm a skeptic, right? I'm not going to blindly believe in anything until I get enough data in my heart and soul and or my senses uh, to convince me of something, you know? I want to experience it firsthand before I just accept something as fact, right? And I think you're the same way. I think that you, um, you've kind of been a little bit of a well, like a, a, a doubting Thomas, you know, a disbeliever, a skeptic. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Because it is precisely those skeptics and disbelievers, those doubting Thomases, that get the spiritual confirmation, that get that spiritual experience, like uh, Paul on the road to Damascus. Um, that's, that's the type of person that spirit, source, God, goddess, deity, your guardian angels, ancestors, spirit guides, that's the type of person that they want to convince, you know, um, that you are going to be sent some experience, some set of energies that is going to change your mind, okay? I think you might be changing your mind about something. I don't know exactly what. Maybe it's not anything as, you know, exalted as your belief in a higher power. Maybe, maybe not. But something that you're very skeptical about, 
you're now discovering the validity of it, the truth of it. You're finding the answer that you need. This is huge. This is life-changing for you, okay? Your life's not going to be the same after this. We can't go from a 10 to an ace and then think we're going to go back to a 10 again, right? We do, though, kind of, right, with the 10 of cups. We... we we start to feel this, this Ten of Cups energy. And this was the kind of proof that we're looking for. I think down beneath everything, underneath all of your skepticism, you really wanted to believe. You really wanted this, but true. now maybe we've got a little bit of confirmation bias. But I think that's the nature of human existence, right? You want something bad enough, you're going to get it. It's going to manifest. You want to believe in something enough, you're going to ultimately get the proof that you want. But I think that it's different for you um, in the sense that you are aware of this fact. Maybe you're, maybe you're a bit of an intellectual. Maybe you're a scientist, right? Maybe you're, you're familiar with the scientific method. Um, uh, I, I think that you're in some kind of a work or a career or some sort of field where you have to think clearly. You have to be discerning. You have to be able to separate your desires, your deepest wants to believe from the data that you get, from the information, from kind of what is what is in front of you, okay? Separating our intellect from our emotions. I think that's something that you do, something you're aware of anyway. Anyway, um, back to these two. You're, you're getting the proof that you need of something, something that you were very skeptical about. Now you're becoming a believer. You know, maybe tarot, right? Something. Um, I think with all of this major arcana, I, I honestly don't even know where to go from here. Because all of these major arcana cards are so special on their own, but, but together, like this is, um, this is really, really huge. Let's start, I guess, with the, uh, with the Empress energy. Okay. I think there might be a connection to a maternal figure here for you. Maybe, you know, I'm getting this feeling that like, like your, your mom or your grandma or someone in your family, right, was a, a mystic, was a magician, was a, a medium, perhaps, perhaps a, a psychic or something like that, right, that they really were immersed in this world and you kind of grew up opposite of that. You grew up with this skepticism, with this disbelief. I feel like there's some connection to, uh, you know, to mom or grandma here. And um, I kind of get the sense that they were maybe a tarot reader, maybe a diviner or a medium of some kind, right? That they had this connection with spirit that you always kind of shrugged it off or maybe you actively disagreed with it, something like that. Um, this is just an example, of course. It could be that um, this was your family belief system. This was the tradition for generations in your family. Um, and it's always been something that you rebelled against. Maybe you kind of tried to go your own way because there was this, maybe this quite unscientific rejection of it, you know? Maybe we were denying something about our family, about our um, family tradition, right? Our heritage, our culture. Uh, denying something just because we, we didn't like it. We wanted to be different. We wanted to, to escape that kind of paradigm. And I, I, think it's, I think it's connected through the maternal line, um, maybe through mom, grandma, maybe older siblings or, or aunties or something like that. But I feel like it's something that you've struggled with. And I, I feel that you're getting the answers that you need now. Maybe you're able to reconcile the magic and the mysticism of this kind of family tradition with your scientific, logical kind of mind right? You're finding somehow, somewhere, you're finding this unified theory of the universe, right? You're finding a way to reconcile your heart and your mind, your culture, 
heritage, your family, this tradition, with the own tradition, your your own kind of path, this kind of scientific path that we're, we're calling it. I don't know if it's exactly that, but you get the idea. Um, you're finding the truth. You're finding, you're finding that these two are converging back into one river. They're not different. They're not the same. You don't have to choose between one and the other. You don't have to choose between magic and wonder and fantasy and science and facts. You don't have to choose between the abstract and the, the theoretical versus the concrete and practical, right? They can both exist at the same time. So you're finding some sort of transcendent truth to this thing. I don't know what exactly it is. I'm, I get the feeling that it's kind of something with, you know, mom was a tarot reader and we've always rejected it, but now here we are, right? Now, um, now we're here, you know. Um, I like that we have a sun up above everything. This is the fire that we need. This is your, this is, is your, your confidence. This is your openness to what you're looking at, right? Because the sunshine is going to find every little nook and cranny, right? Everything's going to be illumined. Nothing is going to be hidden. Everything's out in the open, right? So you're trying very hard not to have this kind of confirmation bias. You're trying to really look at everything, okay? Um, and I think this is, this is important to you. You know, it's important that you, um, that you don't get duped, you know, you don't, that you're not gullible. You don't want anyone to pull the wool over your eyes, right? you you want to be this bright, radiant, shining sun that can see everything, that can accept everything equally. Even if there's a piece of data that you don't agree with, well, it's all part of the picture. It's all part of the landscape that I'm looking at, okay? And I feel like this gives you a leg up on, on life. This gives you an advantage. This gives you this, an activation of kind of both sides of your, of your brain, right? It's not left brain, right brain. It's just one, just kind of, you know, massive um, uh, perception, a, a star, really, right? So I think that this is, this is really, this is what you aspire to. This is at the top of the path of the dove. So you really want to be this open and radiant, ever present, ever shining presence in the world that can look at everything equally, that can shine down on everything. You don't want to be biased or prejudiced in any way. Um, but sometimes in practice, that doesn't always work out that way, right? I mean, that's, that's what we aspire to. It, it's not always, we're not, we're not always going to be that way. We try, we're striving for it. Um, I guess we could talk about this hanged man next. That's kind of, it's what we're, what we're looking forward to, or this is the, the next move really, right? Um, hanged man energy as our next move. Well, for one, it's changing perspectives, right? Different angles. Um, you're looking at things upside down now. And it, things look different when we're upside down. Um, things look differently when we're diving down into the water. Things look differently when we're up above the water, when we, when we come out of the water, right? Uh, we just took our daughter uh, to her swimming lessons uh, yesterday, I think was the last day. Or was it the day before? I don't remember. I think it was yesterday. Um, and both myself and my wife and our daughter, we were, we were just commenting on how different things look when you're underwater and when you're above water. But then you put on your little goggles. My daughter was wearing these, these little Speedo goggles. Um, and, and how differently things looked underwater when you had the goggles on, right? So there's a lot of different ways that we can perceive the world around us. And when we're in the water, when we're down in the thick of things, in our emotions, in the, the, the turmoil, in the turbulence, things, we can't really see much of anything. But if we put on the right spectacles, right? If we put on the right frame of mind, things clear up. We can still see. We're still underwater, but we can see things a heck of a lot better than we could before. So I kind of feel like there is this 
um, this need for you to really explore this Ten of Cups. This is the pool. This is the, the deep end of the pool. And you've got to dive down in there. And you've got to really see, you know, um, what's going on down there. But we're using our goggles, right? These are our, our goggles here, the Sun card. Our clear perception. And now we have even more clear perception with this this Ace of Swords, right? I mean, that's... Um, that's kind of our transcendent perspective. This, these two together really are some really, really clear, clean, crystal clear, not fogged up at all goggles that we're wearing. So let's dive down into ourselves, into how we feel, and figure out, did we really, we always wanted to believe in this? Was there some reason why we were rejecting, uh, we were uh, maybe rebelling against rejecting or denying this tradition coming from our, our family kind of history. Um, what really is going on down here? Now that we have this kind of enlightened viewpoint and we've kind of, we've seen the truth of things, let's go explore this water, you know. Then let's also, let's turn the hanged man around and let's get out of the water. Let's see what things look like from way up above, right? Right? How does all of this fit into the context of the whole, of your whole life, of your whole belief system? Because I, I'm kind of seeing with this Ten of Swords, it's almost like our belief system kind of just got shattered, right? The, um, the, the, the structure, the paradigm that we've maybe, maybe kind of forced, ourse forced ourselves into has been broken down a little bit or a lot. So we need to get out of the water. We need to, to see how it feels. We need to go down to the Ten of Cups. But let's get out of the water and let's see what is, what is the meaning of it. Right? Where does this all fit in to the bigger picture? All right. And this is uh, um, also a reminder that we have to let go of our biases. Right? We have to be willing to give up those beliefs even if we, we were so sure of them, we have to be willing to give them up if they no longer fit into this bigger picture, right? We don't want to be so attached to our beliefs that we can't, we can't give them up when we need to, okay? Well, that brings us over to the path of the serpent now. And we start with this nine of discs. This is a lot of a lot of gain, a lot of the kind of visible signs of progress. This is really, this is growth. You know, not not necessarily physical growth, but it's it's growth of us as a being, as a, a living human in the world, which we all are, right? well, I'm assuming. Um, we are figuring out how to take this new truth this new experience, all of this major stuff over here, all of this really, like this is, this is huge and life's not gonna be the same anymore. Now we're figuring out how to use that, how to, how to go forward, right? How do we continue living our life with this new information? What does it mean? How do we utilize it? How do we, how do we integrate it into our lives, okay? How do we make it work for us, right? So I think that this is this is a very important um, card because it's showing that we're not just we're not kind of just dumbfounded by all of this. That we're thinking about the future. We're thinking about how to carry on, how to move forward, how to continue to make progress in our lives. Okay. Now the next card that we see, I like this a lot. This is the chariot energy in our environment. The chariot to me kind of represents that that bloodline, that family history, culture, heritage, ancestry. So this might be a reconnection with our heritage, a reconnection with our culture, our ancestry, etc. It might be reconciling with the family in some ways, right? It kind of is, this chariot is kind of the energy that's going to go home again. It right? could be that now you're, you're ready to kind of embrace this I, I just I can't help but um, 
just think of all of the Carlos Castaneda books, right? Scien scientific kind of uh, person goes out and experiences all of this wonder and magic and it really spins him around. It really throws him for a loop. He can't make sense of it. Uh, he goes back to his normal kind of sciencey student life, you know, in Los Angeles, but then he goes back to uh, the Sonoran Desert and reconnects with that energy. He accepts it now. He doesn't abandon his scientific mind or his rational thought, but he integrates everything. And um, as you read the books, it really does progress in, in, in a way that's just fascinating. If you haven't read Castaneda, I would recommend it. Uh, but this feels kind of similar to me, especially now with this idea of this chariot where it's just like um, we're figuring out how to integrate both of these seemingly conflicting um, paradigms or belief systems, you know, or these different different sides of ourselves even, and we're taking this energy and we're reconnecting with that magic, that initial, the initial magic and fantasy that we ended up kind of rejecting. Now it's the kind of the prodigal sons returning. Um, so I really like this chariot in the position of our environment. Now the next card is the four of swords. It's in the position of what we don't want. This is what we don't want, but it's what we need. Okay. This is the, um, the card that says, stop arguing, stop trying to figure everything out. Right. Um, stop trying to stop trying to ask questions in that way. Stop trying to analyze the details and, and connect the dots in a logical way, right? We're connecting the dots on paper. That's two-dimensional. Let's connect the dots, three, four, fifth dimension kind of dots, right? Could you imagine a connect the dots that was th at least even three dimensions? That'd be fun. Uh, they probably have that now with 3D printers. I imagine you could. Um, anyway. Stop asking the same questions in the same way, using the same methods, right? Stop trying to argue or stop trying to figure things out uh, in this way. It's going to take a new, a new way of thinking, right? It's something now that we, we can't figure out. We can't use the same mathematics that we used to. We have to, we have to invent a new language, kind of, you know? So this is what we don't want. We don't want to... Um, we don't want to just have to accept something without convincing ourselves, without doing the math, right? But at the same time, we need to realize we can't use the same math we used to. We need to, we need to find the new language. This is going to be the difficult card, and that's why this card is here in this position. It's what we don't want. It's what we need. It's the challenge. It's the fear, the worry, the concern that we're not going to understand that we're not going to be at peace with this reality because we can't figure out the math yet. Well, keep working on it or don't, I don't know. I'm bad at math, so I'm no help. But the next card is this Wheel of Fortune card. And this, this to me is saying that um, this really is a return. This really is you kind of venturing out around the perimeter of the wheel, but you're coming back home. You're coming back to where you started, but you're not the same. It's not a, it's not a circle. It's a spiral. Okay. So I think everything is happening exactly the way it should. I think this is the perfect progression of energies for you. I think this is a really big deal for you. And I don't think your life is going to be the same after this, right? It may, the, again, the wheel is going to turn. We're going to be kind of back in, in the same kind of routine or, um, you know, it, things are going to keep flowing in their, in their cycles, but it's not going to be the same as it was, right? You're different. Reality is different. The way you're perceiving things is different. I think this is exactly where you're supposed to be right now. Now we're going to do a mystery card. So let's take a look at that. Um, I don't know what this mystery card is going to be. Thank you, Frog, for your assistance today. Um, maybe something showing uh, all of this energy kind of integrated into a, uh, a working system. Um, maybe this will be something like, uh, well, six... Any of the sixes, really. Um, 
Six of Swords would be pretty special right now. That's the card of science, right? No, we've got the Empress again. Interesting. So there is this kind of um, a reaffirming of this connection with either a maternal figure or a family of ancestry, of culture, of heritage, history, something like that. And I think that this is a return to that energy, but now we're seeing it differently, right? These these are two cards, uh, both empresses. They're it's the same the same card, but they look very different. At the beginning, before, then we go on this journey, we come back to the same thing, but we're seeing it differently now, right? So I feel like this is the new way that we are connecting with our reality, with our history, with our past, with our family heritage, culture, whatever it might be exactly, take it how it resonates, okay? This is really, truly special. I really, this is a good one. I like this reading, you know? Hopefully it does resonate with you. Take, again, take it how it resonates. Um, I don't know exactly what this paradigm is that we are, that we are shifting through or that we are integrating or that is kind of maybe just breaking down before us. But I feel like this is exactly what you need in your life right now. And this was meant to be. Um, I think this is really a big deal. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and do an extended reading, the Little Frog and I. If you would like to stick around for that, and I think you should, just click up here. And that'll give you access to all of the extended readings, not just for Scorpio, but for every sign. Okay, so you can cross watch. You can watch your other placements. Be sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe if you have not done so already. Thank you for taking this little journey with me. And thank you for being the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot.